Good afternoon. Hope you're all well. Thank you for joining us. Hope you've had a good weekend. Uh, just going to go through our usual checks. Check everything is okay. Check everything's working fine. Um, let's just put that sound on. Yeah, it seems to be working. All as it should be. Here we are. Right. Straight into it. As you can see, uh, we've got a spoon in the vice. Um, yeah, I'm going to do some carving. Um, one thing we're going to do is... I'll just check that's all in focus as well. Yeah, that seems to be fine. Yeah, we've got this love spoon here. Another bespoke spoon that we're working on. With just over a month to get this then to the... Uh, to the person that it's for, as you can see from the date. And I've also just got this little one here. We've actually been asked to make 10 of these. Shape is based roughly on our Christmas tree decoration design. Um, oh, hello, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Glad to have you with us. Great to see you as, uh, as well. Great to see how those love spoons are, are coming along. They, I tell you what, they, they seem to be proving popular. That's a, that's a few that you've made then. Um, Glad you're uh, glad you're enjoying having a go with the love spoon and the, and the wood carving. Great to see. Um, yeah, hope all is well. Hope you're keeping warm in the workshop. And uh, as always, thanks thanks for joining us. This one here that we're carving, it's a piece of oak and yeah, reclaimed piece of wood. And we're actually going to be doing well. It'll be it'll be coming up later on in the year for those of you who don't know basically with the uh, with our youtube channel you've always got to be a fair amount in front with everything otherwise it sort of gets difficult to organize and it gets difficult to um how can we explain uh, when we get busier then it keeps it, we've got to keep you know, uh, up with everything. So to allow us to have a, a weekly upload, as we do, uh, we try to be a bit in front. But we got a new idea, so it'll be coming up on the channel later on in the year, but um, at some stage, I don't know when. And it's going to be hopefully a bit of fun. Hopefully it'll turn into a, a new series for our channel. And we're going to start filming it all going well later on this week so can't say too much at this stage top secret stuff but it is definitely um something we're looking forward to um something we're excited about developing um yeah so as you can see this piece of oak is carving nicely we marked it out same as always with that vertical grain and um we're just starting to work on the entwined on the entwined hearts you may notice then that we have a certain style that we tend to stick to and a style that, um, yeah, fairly distinctive to our cells. Um, and it allows us to, how can I explain, adapt and accommodate all sorts of different symbols, different ideas, that sort of thing. You may notice a bit of background noise as well. Apologies for that. Um, We've got Thomas the Woodcarver working in the background. It's all part of a, a a busy workshop. And then also there's the background noise of the mower going where my um, my brother Math, he is uh, cutting the grass. So, yeah, a few things going on. Last week it was the car park. This week it's the scroll saw and cutting the grass. So it's the same sort of processes that we normally go through where we're trying to get our levels. We're dropping drop in different parts of the design back into the wood and it's nice this particular piece lovely color nice character to the wood and um, you start to see that that coming through so far as well it's carving really very nicely the main one then we're going to demonstrate for you today we got these hedgehogs so that's the main demonstration that we're going to do is just a, a simple little animal carving so that's what we, we're always trying to bring you, is something a little bit different. And today, then, we'll be showing how we go about hand carving the hedgehogs. Also go through as well with this one, when we come on to the hedgehogs, some of the little 
issues when it comes to the um, when it comes to the designing. So yeah, we'll go through that as we go along. So we're just getting the level that we want to push these initials down to. So getting it back into the design, pushing it back as we go, and um, we'll do the same. We've done that one initial on the one side. We'll now come across to the other side, and we will drop the depth down on this one as well. So we're just starting to get the uh, the levels that we want everything pushed back to. And at the same time, we will create the effect of this entwining. And what you're trying to do, similar to where we use like the Celtic designs, where you go in under and over, it's the same thing then with the hearts, where we create that effect of the hearts going under and over one another, entwining together. And one of the, this particular design then, the way it came about where we develop this this method of entwining the hearts is something we quite often used to get asked where people would ask for uh, entwined hearts and the difficulty with doing hearts together like this is to not have one sort of dominating the other so it was always a, a problem where if you do sort of try to entwine hearts you can end up with the one heart being more dominant than the other oh Losing your mind. Oh dear. Hello. Hello to the carver. Great to have you with us. Hope everything's hope everything's good. Hope you're all okay. And uh, yeah, hope you're managing to stay stay warm because it's a uh, it was uh, a bit colder by the look of things with yourselves than it is with us here. To be honest with you, as I said, my brother Matthew's out cutting the grass, so a bit milder than we used to. Uh, you how wow. After the live stream, there we are. I hope everything's all right. I've actually got, um, yeah, I was talking about one of the ideas, um, one of the ideas that I've got coming up on the channel, and uh, it might be of, uh, of interest to yourselves. That's uh, both Stephen and the carver, because, um, yeah, I can see us. I could see it having potential where uh, where we do a little bit of a collaborating, that sort of thing. So something for later on in the year, but hopefully it will uh, might be of interest to yourselves and uh, might be a bit of fun. Right, so you can see we got these two initials. We got them starting to go back into the designs. Going back as well to explain about the hearts, that was the problem we always used to have when people would ask us for entwined hearts, you'd end up with one heart sort of dominating the other. I mean, we never liked that. So this method allows us to get the hearts entwined together without having one more prominent than the other. How well means to, ah, right. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, definitely. We, we'll have to have a, this is where we get, we get, Crossed wires with the with the, with the shared language. I'm with you. Oh, we'll uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, we 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 need to we definitely need to have a chat. And uh, yeah, for anyone who hasn't as well, get across to the Carver's channel. Check out those videos. Stephen's channel too. Um, there's some great content on on both channels. And uh, the Carver's channel is is developing all the time. And Stephen's got some fantastic content on his channel too. So if you like your woodworking, definitely worth checking out both of those channels. So you can see we're just dropping down these levels and it's building up to focusing on this, this main carving. Again, sharing the methods and the thought processes that go into things. You can tell already with this bespoke carving, my main concentration is on those hedgehogs so whilst it's in my head let's go straight into it and that's generally what i advise so for anyone who's learning carving go to the carving that you think is potentially the most challenging so don't sort of put it off grab the bull by the horns or the hedgehog by the spikes and uh yeah, get straight into uh, your car then. So the first thing 
we got them joined in there. Now you may notice, you may be wondering, why have I got two hedgehogs? Why are they walking up a hill? Um, and yeah, a bit of a strange thing to do in some ways, but there's a reason, always a reason. And the reason for it, if we had them flat, the back of the hedgehog comes out to here. You may be able to just pick out some faint lines because that's how I originally drew it. And then afterwards, I, I, I drew it where the one was sort of coming up here and the other was slightly underneath. And when I showed it to the customer, they didn't like it. So um, I had to redesign it. And the only way that I could make it where the love spoon didn't start to become too wide and it would sort of work out for us was to have them walking. It was either going to be walking uphill or downhill. The problem is, see, is we're always thinking of the overall love spoon and the aesthetics. So if I show the, the love spoon from top to bottom, you're, you're thinking about the aesthetics of your, your design. And if it's too wide, yeah, for me, it's, it's a problem. It starts to, um, you start to lose that balance. And I, yeah, I, if I'm, depending on the style of love spoon that I'm doing, there's a sort of limit of how wide we can get to. So that is why it's, um, that is why it's, it's, it's done in the way it is. So it was walking uphill as opposed to having quite a wide love spoon. I just thought it would, uh, would suit better, basically, if that makes sense. Right, so what we need to do, we've got these some of these markings. So we're using, as always, we're using these guidelines just to follow, to give us a rough idea. Oh dear, you can hear Thomas the Woodcarver saying, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, in the background. So I hope something hasn't gone wrong in uh, what he's cutting out. And now he's coughing. So no, I think it's more he's, uh, he's struggling on a Monday afternoon there by the sounds of it. There we are. Thomas and Woodcarver's coming to join us. Afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> He's in the background there. What have what you been cutting out today? Do you want to? Uh, there's one. Here we are. So that's what Thomas Woodcarver's been cutting out. This is our internet stock. So that's our our cat design. What's um, the pussy cat? Yeah. And there's the birds, the pussy cat we're chasing. So we've got some love birds that he's been cutting out. It looks like you need a new, new blade on there. I can see a bit of burning. <laughs> Thomas Woodcarver's not impressed. I, I, can, I can see a bit on there as well. I know the dragon. I going back next door. That's it. Thomas Woodcarver's had enough already. I going back next door. He's going back. I gonna put a new blade in. I I I, I got a confession. I I I should have said actually because I did notice it on um on some of the the um. Some of the uh, these ones here, I noticed a few little marks. What happens, you get a blade and it's cutting well, does the job well. And the thing is, is that you don't want to be changing a blade if it is cutting and it's cutting well. But the prob problem is, is it does go too far and then it's leaving you extra work then in the finishing. And so, uh, yeah, it causes a different, different type of problem. So that's uh, Thomas Woodgarver going back in to finish them off. All you do, you go back over the line and just where there's that little line of burn, uh, a lot of the time, it's where you turn, where you turn the, see if I can just show you in there. There's a few little, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the camera, but there's a few burn marks there. And what happens, as you're cutting down there and you turn to cut there, it's the back of the blade. It just catches and it just causes a little bit of a burn mark in what you're, in what you're cutting out. So... An annoying little, little issue. Oh, here we go. He's bringing in a blade to show us. The two things. It's it's annoying, isn't it? Because you like, it, have you been working with the same blade? Because the thing is, is you you don't like to change the blades. Yeah, but unless you need to. Everybody, but right. Yeah. I I mean, let's be honest now. I, I I have a little bit of a cold, you see. He, he has indeed got a cold, so, yeah. So I, I was struggling there. Oh, he's, he's fully tested, so it's nothing more than the cold. I, and I couldn't I couldn't quite see. Yeah. Until I brought it into uh, yourself, now I could see that um, 
there was a bit of a burn mark on it. But if you okay. want to show that, there are two things about it. You see, it's the angle that is, first of all. Yeah, this is something that happens. Um, we got videos, we got one video talking about this. We, we, again, this is something that happens. You you put, um, and I've got to say, and I, I know I'll upset some people who are saying this, the worst worst blades for doing this are the Pegasus blades. Um, this one is actually a Nick with speed, but as you can see, it's at an angle, and it slips in the holder, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's laziness on my part, right? Because right, you knew. <laughs> I, well, when I put the blade in... Okay. All you have to do... Yeah. A bit of coarse sandpaper. Uh, well, that's right. Some bit, sandpaper on it. That, look. Yeah, right. just a bit of sandpaper. Sand the okay. end. Here's a little... Yeah, here's a little tip. What to do to stop blades slipping. The, just where, where just sand the end. There, there you go. Bit, right? Sand the yeah, end. You're going with the grain now. Oh, you want me to go across the grain? So, go across can't, the grain. I can't, I can't. You're asking right. me to do things I don't like. Yeah. yeah let me just show... This is the new but one, because that's the old one, so... There's no point in you doing that one, right? Right. So this is my new blade. Okay. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna new put blade. it on there. Bit of fine emery cloth or um, rough paper. I'm gonna. Oh, he's going against the grain. I can't cope with I'm this. I'm gonna cross there. Both sides. Rough it up. That's the one, and the top. No. So it's. It's, it's basically, if you sand against the grain on your scroll saw blades, you get a better grip on them. And yeah. so... Well, what I'm doing, That's fine. if there's any grease or anything on there, yeah. I'm getting rid of it. Yeah. But have you shown the angle that this one ended up? Well, that's that's what happens. It just slips at an right. angle. Yeah. Um, and and that, that that that's basically what happens because it doesn't grip perfectly. And have um, you shown the have Stephen, you shown the burn? Stephen's concerned about you. He reckons I'm working you too hard. I, I thank you, Stephen. Yes. And no, and the other thing. Absolutely th right. Uh, uh, ch changing the subject quickly. Um, yeah, you've got this little burn mark. Yeah, you've got the burn. And that, right? that then is what causes the burning. Now, it's an interesting one. We got asked this a couple of times last year. And um, first of all, we thought, what is this madness? People are asking us, can you sharpen a scroll saw blade? Do you remember us being asked last yeah. year? And at first, we were like, oh, what would you want to do that? But you, we, did, we tried it. We tried yeah. to sharpen the so and it, and it worked. You, if you slacken that off there yeah, now. I don't know whether I can in, without it being in the holder. Right, okay, I've got to put it in the holder. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, could, I, I could do it if I squeeze it in okay, the vice. There we are. Put it in the holder to... Right, right. I, I haven't thought about that. There we are. So I put it in the holder. Uh, but you can always, you know, you can always tell, because what happens, as it slides across like that, so it slips. Uh, so we put that in there. It's, it's quite interesting, this one here, actually, what, what Dad is saying, what Thomas the Woodcarver uh, is explaining, because this is something that happens to myself quite often we uh, we as well. Show, just show what I've done, I'm going to tighten it. So, I'm yeah. Sure. So, now, that blade's been tightened up. It's it's running straight, so you've got the straight blade. And, you can see, and it's a new you can blade. See it's clean. It. It's clean, and he's also sanded it against the grain to stop it slipping. So, all in all, um, a better job. Yeah. The truth is, what happens is that we're working for, oh, it must be thousands of hours with the scroll saw. And yeah. you, you do... I mean, you, there is a way, if you had a, a slightly different blade okay. with, with pins... Yeah, a pin blade. A pin blade, then obviously that wouldn't happen, would it? You know, because but if be... you... if Yeah, but, but as a general rule, pinless blades are... Better than pin blades because well, I, I guess they're more expensive. What the pin blades? Yeah. Nah, you've got less choice. You've oh, got right. the, no the, the the pinless blades are the way to get. Well, everything I don't know. Perhaps somebody, perhaps other people would have different ideas. But my experience of it, pinless blades are much better. The reason they're much better as well is because you think with that pin, you you can't do that fine. You can't do that fine cut. Do you understand? Yeah. You've I've got a never big. Been, got... I've never been into metalwork or steel or anything like that, so I just wonder with the fact that these, you know, being steel blades. Yeah. Do do they? Be interesting for people that 
maybe it would help out really in answer the question. Do do they sort of accumulate a little bit of grease over the, over the? Is there, you know is there something that they absorb even from the atmosphere that makes the steel just slightly slippery then? What would about oxidation? Would that have an effect? I don't know. Is you know, um, because you, you is can it see, oxidation? They say, they, don't they? you know, they're definitely better when we when we rough them up with a bit of emery cloth or. Oh, absolutely. Um, Do you remember the when we were doing? Because we've got coming up on the channel, we've got we did a load of blade trials, and the ones that really drove us around the bend were the Pegasus ones. Yeah, remember? Because they were we, every time we used them, they slip. They slip yeah. out the holder. It's driving us mad, to be honest with you. Um, and, and so that was the only way we could use them, is, is if we sanded them. Um, I don't know, perhaps other people have had a right, different I'm experience. Right now and I've all the one I've, um... Have I got, yeah, I've got a softer piece of sandpaper. In the meantime as well, as you can see, our hedgehogs, they're starting to, to come along. Um, they're starting to take shape. I think I will carry on shaping them just a little bit. We get this pushed. So basically what I'm doing with this carving, see, is we're shaping it as we go along, trying to get that shape on our hedgehog. Um, yeah, and it's it's trying to get the levels, trying to decide how we're going to push it back. We we'll then turn it, we're going to turn it around in the vise, just to show you my idea for giving it a spiky, a spiky type effect is to use... You know, to use our, what do you call it, a skewer type gouge and just put little markings on its back. The simple little, simple little markings like that. I don't know, should they be the other way? Have I got me, have I, have I got me, if they go in that way, hang on, let's try. This is where you experiment a bit. Uh, oh, oxidation would show a little rust on the blade which should help the grip in my opinion yeah you would think so wouldn't you um i've done it that way i've done it like that perhaps it would be better like that let's try it now's the time to get it right um which way do i prefer no i, oh, I don't know oh hang on i've done the same one i've done the same both ways yeah it should go the other way it should go like that right so carve all of that back out I prefer it the other way. So all we do, see, what happens when it goes wrong? What happens when it goes wrong? Carve it back out, reshape it, get the depth back on. That's why you see, you have, make sure you've got plenty of wood, so if uh, you're not happy with your first attempt, try and try again until you get it right. Better off trying it at this stage so, where's the gouge that I was just using? Um, I'm probably looking straight at it. It's not that one, it's that one. Right, so the gouge should go that way. Yeah, it's more like it. That way, and that way. Yeah, so it gives it that, that's the correct way. That's the way we're going with, anyway. That's the little sort of decisions you're making, deciding which way round you want to go. Uh, packing tape over the pattern helps lubricate the blade and reduces burning, so I'm told. Right, that's an interesting one. Um, probably cheaper to replace the blade than spend on packing tape. Interesting one. Yeah, I've read that one. I read. I was reading that one in the last week. There's loads of different methods. There were a few people as well explaining. We did um, last week, as some of you may have seen, we did that review of our Hegner scroll saw. And a few people were saying about um, if you draw, they, they like to draw the pattern on in red because they find that they can see the pattern better. Um, so, yeah, if you find it difficult following following the uh, the guidelines, draw it on in red, apparently, and that'll, that'll help out. All different techniques that might help a little bit. For myself, I've never found it too much of a problem, but... Uh, and it, what it comes down to a lot with ourselves is time. Having the time to be able to do these different things. If you've got the time to do them, brilliant. For myself, to, the only way I could sort of think 
where, because I draw out a lot of my patterns. I think that that's a big part of it because a lot of what we do is hand drawn. Um, so we'll take an image and quite often we'll take that image and we'll have to adapt it to actually work in whatever design that we're working on. So, um, because it's all hand drawn, the only way I can think of, and again, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but the only method that I could come up with for changing all of my patterns to red, if I really wanted to, would be to put them in Photoshop and then to go to the selective color tool and to change all the colors to the change black basically change it to red so change the magenta um that was the only uh that was the only thing i excuse me i could think of would be to change the the color sort of manually in that way but if you're looking for different techniques if you struggle to follow the line no, definitely I'm, worth considering I'm sort of look. It up now, I think it's not absolutely perfect when we kick it back yeah. on the back no, but that's better. You can see there's a lot, a lot of the burning's gone off there. There's yeah, yeah, but there they are. That's 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 what happens for different methods. Uh, yeah, and another one as well. Um, the another comment that was about the scroll saw. Different people I was saying what, what they were coming up with, saying about the red. If you have that red line to follow, there were two reasons why we don't use that as a method. One is basically time that's because well, and because we do actually draw we've always used carbon paper and we we've used sort of different colors and red actually was the one that would cause us a problem because we're working a lot in mahogany and at different times we've drawn we've drawn a design on in in red on mahogany and you can't see it because the wood's red so the design is so it's yeah, but again, if you're looking for a method, if you find following a black line difficult, that's one thing you can you can think of. Um, the other one then that people were talking about, which was interesting, uh, was the foot pedal. And something we've looked at at different times, a different method for controlling it. I think, I think for ourselves, again, in some ways, we're so set in our ways in, 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 is, is one way of describing it. I could actually see us um, finding it really strange. Although when you stop and think how many times we must have turned a scroll saw on and off, it must be thousands, but it's just something that we're used to doing. So it's very much second nature to us, but all interesting methods and great to have. That's, you know, for, for ourselves, fantastic to be able to have an insight into methods that you will use and different approaches um, that you take. Yeah, let us know. Give us your own thoughts on some of those methods and if, uh, if you think they'll be useful. And another one then we were talking recently with somebody about was the gouges and they were explaining how they, they use vintage gouges a lot as well. But... Uh, <sighs> Is getting hold of a lot of them. I think they were actually based out in Canada and they had all sorts, some of the names we'd never even, uh, never heard of ourselves. All, all made in the UK many years ago, but some names we've, we've never heard of. So you can see what we've done. We've got the shape. What are you looking on on there? No, it's you squared, squared it up a bit, is it? Yeah, it's okay. I've drilled a hole in the back so I can hang up. That's it. So what Dad is working on as well, um, since we've come back, we've had a number of different bespoke requests. So one off Love Spring, so that's good. And we're, we're making those. Um, but we've also, we've sold a few spoons on the internet. And of course, every time you sell one, you've got to replace it. Unusual in that way, our business is where the things that we sell, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because you sell something, you have to make a replacement to your sell brother, again. Your brother Matt has given us a boost though, he's got a pile of stuff. Done. Yeah, Matt's been in here, he, he comes in over the winter and he he mar he's marked out lots of spoons, got that started for us and um, that moves things along a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. And we're, we're concentrating mainly on um, internet spoons because we've still got a lot of stock because we haven't had the same sort of number of 
visitors in the workshop, we've still got a lot of stock from the last couple of years. Because throughout the lockdowns and the rules and regs, we've carried on working. We just haven't had as many customers. But this year, it does look as if there's potential for things to open up more, doesn't it? And yeah. To see I'm, more I'm, people. I'm going to lubricate my... Um, ah, my there's an interesting the comment from Stephen there as well. Um, packing tape over the pattern helps lubricate the, bl the, bl the blade and reduces burning. You ever come across that at all? Would that be clear packing tape then, or what? I would think so, otherwise you can't see the line. Not so thinking. it's not like sellotape? Possibly, yeah. Because the one thing I've noticed, because I, at different times, I got one round here somewhere, there was a butterfly where I had sellotape over it, and do you know the problem I had with that? Yeah, the up and, and and sometimes if you catch it, it, it changes colour slightly yeah. and you, you couldn't see where you were you were going. Um so oh it's interesting. This is the great thing, there's so many methods and there's pros and cons with all sorts of different things. Right, so you can see we're well on with the, the shape. We're making progress and um we just, I can just see there, it looks to me like a little piece is just pulled up a little bit. So if you notice something like that, just go back over it if you're not 100%. And there's that one there. So we got most of the shape of our hedgehogs. And we just want to get rid of, I'm always conscious of getting rid of all the, the paper. You've got to think, when we come to sand it afterwards... If it's, uh, if it's too high up, then we lose all of that detail anyway. So we just go around that, because it'll get sanded off by the belt sander. So we just work our way around. So again, it's those simple methods, the stop cuts, getting some detail, getting the depth on the, uh, the design. We'll also come around, change the gouge, Come around the outside here. And when it comes to the carving then, animals and birds, they're some of my favourite carvings to, to do. Because you've got that. It's lovely to sort of see them take shape. But they can be some of the trickier ones just to get right. Or to be happy with. That's the main thing. As long as you're happy with the with what you've managed to produce. So far as well, so good with this piece of oak. When we're marking out as well, one little pointer, we always check the wood, have a good look, little look through, so you can see there's a little darker patch there. We also look on the top and on the ends and things like that, just check that there's nothing to be too concerned about, um, no real issues, because it's, it's, it's far easier if you can get things uh, marked out you know it can be really frustrating sometimes and it happens to ourselves you'll be working on a piece and there'll be a blemish in the wood sometimes completely invisible and uh, the next thing you start carving through it and you bring out the blemish and it doesn't look as you would hope so always have a good check on the wood in and around it for anything that you think might cause you a problem as you go through the carving. So, let's have a little look. I'm thinking, I wanna keep things fairly simple. So we got the mouth, we got the mouth, we got the, yeah, so just a little, little line, like so for the mouth. There we are, just a little line, just like so. And then, I'm, you always think in a different, there's a few different methods we use for doing eyes. This one here, I want to keep it quite simple. So I'm just going to do the same, the same using that skewer chisel, the same as one of the spikes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I might put a little dot, might use the um, spike, which I can't see on the bench at the moment, to do a little dot for the nose. But all in all, that is coming along quite nicely. 
Self-praise, they say, no recommendation, isn't it? No, I'm, I, I like to see if the, the carving is taking shape, and that, for me, seems to be doing okay. It doesn't look too bad. Clear pattern tape, the heat vaporises, the petroleum-based tape, and it lubricates. The really cheap stuff is the best. Right. So... Is it this? Is it this type of tape? Just out of interest. Because um, if it is, we have used this, and I will have to have, I will probably be having another go at doing that. Um, oh, we just got a delivery come in. Brilliant, thank you for that. Nah, fantastic. Thank you. There we are, that's our local uh, delivery driver there, dropping off a, a small parcel for ourselves. Um, yeah, so that is coming along, that's taking shape. A little bit more sanding on the backs of our hedgehogs. We need to find that one, we need to find that one piece of equipment. I was looking for it earlier and I couldn't find it, to be honest with you. A few little spikes. I'll do the eye first. So the eye is going back from there. There we are. It just shows how you can keep things quite simple in what you're doing. Here we are. Okay. Yelly's just walked in. You saying hello to everyone? Yeah. The, hello. the tape they use. The tape they use in handheld carton packaging machines. I think it is that one. Yeah, I think that's the one that we're using. So we, we give it a go again, see how we get on. Always good to try different things. So we're giving our hedgehog his spiky back. And that is the bulk of... It's the main carving that I would be conscious of in this particular love spoon. <sighs> there. Yeah, that's coming along. Right, so we move back, back up further into the design. And um, we got this date. So again, we'll drop the depth. Because what happens afterwards, see, we've got to sand all of this paper back off, get rid of all of that a method that we've used more in recent times. And what we do, we use the belt sander to sand that paper off afterwards. And we actually have a belt just for that job because what, what the paper does, it tends to clog up the, uh, the belt. And so it makes it a bit useless for, for a lot of the sanding that we're doing. And the love spoon itself, when dad comes back in, I will check with him but I've got a feeling from the way it's carved and from the look, from the colour of the wood, it wouldn't surprise me if this is another love spoon that we've made from the wardrobe that is going to be featuring in a video sometime again this year where we look at where we bought a piece of furniture and then we look at what we can make out of it. This one here. Um, this piece of wood, is it is it from that piece of furniture that we were going to do the video on? Just out of interest. Um, He's looking hard at it. Yeah, I think so. So it's another piece from... Yeah. It's, a, it's lovely, it's lovely <laughs> oak. Yeah, it looks... Uh... Really nice character and it, it carves nicely. Here we go, we get Thomas the Woodcarver as well, his 50 years of uh, insight, his 50 years plus. What do you think of my hedgehogs? 50 years plus insight from Thomas the Woodcarver. What do you think? Um, you ple hedgehogs. pleased with those? Uh, I, I personally, I think they should be more rounded. There we are. High praise indeed from Thomas the Woodcarver. Well, it, That's fine. So you want yeah. me to, you want me to get a more rounded? Yeah, just a little bit more rounded to the back. Okie dokie. Cool. Blim What are you drinking? Hey. What are you drinking? It's brandy. <laughs> I can smell the fumes. So Thomas the Woodcarver started early. He's on the brandy in the afternoon. Rustic Woody, hello there. Uh, what grip belt works best for removing the pattern without scoring the wood? Ah, 
That's um, that is a two right. Basically, well, they might be surprised at this answer. Um, yeah, you have to use quite a low grit, really, don't you? You you are using sort of forty and eighty, but you well, then well, have to go back. Do. You then have to go back over it on one twenty and one fifty yeah, to get your, rid of the lines. The paper, you've got to, You've got to use the forty, which is quite coarse. Yeah, but. It's look, going, you know, with the grain, just be gentle with it. Yeah, it takes the paper off, and right? You've got the glue underneath as well. Should we, should we explain the full method? Right, what you do get a 40 grit belt that you've used quite a lot, yeah. Okay, so it's not a new 40 grit belt, so a lot of the life has gone out of the belt, so the really harsh nature of it has been lost a bit. That's the first thing that we do. We are then when we sand that design off, we go as lightly as we can, making sure that we're sanding, as we always do, with the grain. Yeah? Yeah. From there then, as we can see that we've ripped off the majority of the paper, we then take it across to the other belt sander where we'll have a P120 and we'll sand the rest of it off and then down to a p 150 because that's the problem is is basically as you said you 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 do end up scoring the wood but to give you an idea if i show you on the sides of this one you can see that is still off the bandsaw this one here you still got the the like the aris where um although we use a reverse tooth blade which doesn't mark it as much it's still on there we've only bandsawed the back of the spoon so there's quite a little bit to be done once you've done all of that, what I find is quite often I have to come back um, where what I have to come back and I actually have to go over some of the detail. This is why this is why I say, like for instance, I'm dropping these parts of the carving right back. This is why I do that is because I, I'm thinking about that sanding afterwards to try and keep as much of the design away from the sanding. So as an example, on this one here, what you will sometimes find is on the hedgehogs, this bit that is slightly more proud, sometimes you'll end up sanding that and you've made more work for yourself because you've got to go back over it in the carving. Yeah. But it's the... Yeah, but it, those hedgehogs now are, are, are well below surface most of them are most of the hedgehogs is the o the only bit that could catch is here yeah but i think i tell you what i've got um there's a carving over there there's the over in the bespoke ones the dragon on the big spoon Sh I, if we show everybody there and that'll give them an idea this one that's the one yeah that's the one okay so this one here here we go it's easier to show than to explain. The carver wants to know where his drink is as well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, if you look at this one, I've done exactly that. I've just been on the sander and I've been taking off the, the design itself. Okay? So, what I've done from there... I've got a block. Uh, sanding, sanding block. block. Sanding block. I've got that bit there. Only good deal. Yeah, that'll be fine. What I've done is I've then done, I've gone back over it and I've done P120 and P150. If you look in this part of the dragon, I've lost some of the detail. So it's basically when you're sanding it, we don't always sand perfectly symmetrically. You know, you're, you're putting a bit more pressure on the one part than the other part, that sort of thing. So I've gone over that and then I also hand sand it as well. But what it, what it gives us what it gives us, it gives us those guidelines to follow. So there are pros and cons of using that as a method. It's also flattened this off a little bit, so I'll reshape that. So that's what it does. So where you can see, I've lost this detail, but whilst I've lost that detail, I've still got those guidelines to be able to roughly follow. So I just re redo the stop cuts and use them again. So that's 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 the sort of thing that will happen. But on a love spoon like this, I've got a lot of shaping all on this twist to do, and I'm using then P320 sandpaper. And for instance, the shamrock, which is well below the level, that needs just as much shaping because we need to round it all off. 
Yeah. Back, back to that blade. Dave. Back to the strong sword blade. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Is, there's a dilemma really here because. Well, a lot of these things that there are, aren't there? There's yeah. you make decisions. I, I, know and I know it may sound. You know, but as I was working, I was working those. I, I had four spoons. I had the birds, the dragon one, the the cat, uh, and there was one other one I was cutting out. And as I'm doing it, and then you, when I brought it in here, you you showed me that it it wasn't right. Well, what it is, right? This is another thing. Lighting. Because when I'm doing the live stream, I've got LED, I got yeah. a I got a Roto light, which is a good light to the Roto lights, and, and that is any little blemish. To be honest with you, it's a good thing and a bad thing. This is one of the it's a good thing in terms of you getting good light. The other side of it is you see everything. Um and any little blemish. Yeah, but that's a good thing. It is a good thing because, because it's qual it's quality, isn't it? We know then that the customer Yeah. They, you know, if you if they if, you, if yeah if you've looked at it under a, a, a spotlight yeah then the customer is is not going to do that then yeah you know? that's right okay you, you may get one in a thousand that would but that's uh, right um, and we, you're basically you know photographers and videographers have always got good lighting and so you you won't find most people are not using lighting like that to check everything but but you what I was going to say is that your dilemma. With your, your blades. You're, you're welcome as well, Woody. Anytime. How many, how many blades should you keep in, rever in, in reserve? Well, and that brings us on to another point as well. And I know it shouldn't be this. And I know you'll get annoyed with me now for saying this. But there is another thing as well. Sometimes when you're working with a blade, it's cut you a lot of stuff. And you're thinking to yourself, hmm, maybe I should change the blade. And you keep going yeah, with a blade you do. because why why change a blade if it is yeah, still cutting? Yeah. And the other thing, the other reason with that, we're finding it harder to get hold of blades. Yeah. The price of blades has more than doubled exactly. in the last year. Yeah, which is what I was, and so, as I was as I was cutting these out, that was what was in my head. And of course, what happens? I keep the blade then. And then I have to go back over it then with a new blade. You see what I mean? So there's a dilemma there. It is, it's but it's difficult. Course, the other question that comes up there then, am I getting the right price for my product? There we are. Which we've discussed well, again, a lot before. Basically, this is the thing. The price of blades, as we're saying, it is costing us now for 144 blades, it is costing us double because we're having to buy it from somebody in Poland, yeah. thanks to a link given to us by the carver. And, and everything and, today. And everything's going up. Is um, increasing in price. And we we are not asking people to pay double for their love spoon. No. So our costs have doubled, our electricity, and we're still running on the same price structure as as we were a twelve months ago. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. and I know my friend now, he's he's a fabricator, and this is his problem all the time. Um, he he gives people quotes and things like that, and what he's finding is that people are coming back um, where he's given them a quote, say um, six months ago, twelve months ago, and they're saying, "All right, I'm ready to have the building made now." And he's saying, "Well, we can do you a new quote because everything yeah. has gone up so I mean, much." In our country, the budget will be set now for next um, April, beginning of April. Now, most of these costs are going to uh, are going to the, you know, the government have, have put a new, um, what, they, what they put on? Um, oh, I, I, what do they call it? They, well, they're putting on, they put a new cost on national, national insurance. National insurance. Yeah. yeah. National insurance, whereas obviously it's different in America because... Um, oh, we've got to share with our American friends the new rules of the highway code. Oh, you'll love these. These are some fantastically well thought through, well rounded ideas from here in the UK. Penny for your thoughts, Thomas the Woodcarver. Yeah, be careful because you may upset the cyclists. Yeah. There we are. Dear me. Um, yeah, we got some interesting new rules, haven't we, Thomas yeah. the Woodcarver? Well, no, back on the budget one, Dave. Everybody's costs are going to go up. Yes. In, in April. Yeah. In this in this country. Yeah. I guess it's the same for other people abroad as well. Yeah, um, absolutely, all so, around the world. So, you know, your, your pricing, you're going to have to look at it. Uh, 
No, I'd just be interested to know, because um, um, it's some of the most confusing rules I think I've ever seen um, with the highway code, with horses and, and bicycles and pedestrians, isn't it? If you, if you get to a junction now, um, like a T-junction, that sort of thing, the pedestrian has got the right of way. The car can't turn off the road if there's a pedestrian waiting. All the cars got to wait behind the cars until the pedestrian crosses. Yeah, but that's, I, that's, I, I haven't read it myself. That's, that's one. And another was that um, you need to give either a metre and a half or two metres to um, cyclists, horses, that sort of thing, when passing them. We, I'm looking at the road in front of us. It's, it's not... It's barely... It's barely, a, and a cyclist goes past. <laughs> yeah, but, you but got, you're allowed to ride now two abreast on a bike. You know, you can have two bicycles. But but that road, there's side. no way you can have a car and a bicycle on that road and give the bicycle two metres. So it's a physical impossibility exactly. to go yeah. past a, a bicycle. And the, the, the interesting one, um, glad someone else thinks that they... I haven't been thought through. There we have Rustic Woody saying the th same thing. Well, I got an interesting one on it. Um, what happens now if the police are doing a chase and they, I mean, the, you know, and they're trying to catch some, some criminal. Me, yeah. And, 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 they're, and they're driving off in their car and then in the middle of it, the, the, the <coughs> criminal in there, you know, trying to get away, they go past a horse or a bike Technically, the police they can't go past the the, the bike or the, the horse. They, they, how I don't understand how is that one going to work? So here we go. This is um, yeah. I'd be interested to know what what people's thoughts are on it. It's 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 basically the yeah. But the people that think of these things, you see, they you know they, they they're not love spoon makers. They're not they're not people that actually make things with their hands. They, well, they only make things with their brains, you see. Well, it's, it'll be really interesting because, I mean, basically what they've done is that they've they've taken a lot of... Um, Common sense? They've taken the right, all the rights away from the, the car driver and the uh, lorry driver, the van driver and all the rest of it. And the only problem, like when you actually stop and think about it, who's paying for all the roads? It's the vehicle user, isn't it? So it's be, I'd just be interested to know what people's thoughts are. I'm all for protecting the cyclists, the the horse users, the absolutely pedestrians. Everyone should be safe on the on the roads. But um, I'm, I'm we're confused. We're very confused. So yeah, let us know in the comment section how, what all these rules are and um, how how we how we're supposed to drive now because we're I can't make head nor tail of them. Can you or? I did see a couple of videos on YouTube where lawyers were trying to explain them and they seemed a bit confused. So when the lawyers are confused, it should be, uh, it could be interesting. I reckon it's going to be like the wacky races, yeah? yeah? Right, we got that one there. What was it, Catch a Pigeon? That was one they did as well, wasn't it, with the wacky races? Catch the Pigeon. So you can see this one, getting back to the spoon, that's taking shape. You'll see, uh, keeping distance from horse and bikes, was down to common sense, but common sense is not as common as... as it, it's, it's right. right. Yeah. That's the, and it's, it's the saying that one of my brother's friends, uh, he always says, the problem with common sense is it's not very common. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, common sense, big, big thing as well. Another one with it, what happens now where um, you've got cycle... Like, all in this area, they, they spent millions on cycle paths... Um, but they don't use them. They, they, and I understand the cyclists, if you speak to them, they say, we don't use them because they're, they're, they're quite often they're full of glass and they're dangerous and things like that and they're not properly thought out. Um, but again, is, you know, if, if that's, should they, you know, should they be used? And, well, we have, oh, it's going to be funny times. We have situations where, where you, you have a cycle path, but a, a, a cyclist not using it and... You know, we're as car drivers, and we're having to queue behind the cyclists. Well, round here, there's no the roads are too narrow, pass. isn't it? That road and yet there. There's a cycle track. How wide do you reckon that road is? Three meters? Four meters? I will go and measure it, Dave. Thomas Woodcarver's out going out to measure the road. I hope I don't get knocked down on by a, a horse or a car on the bike. <laughs> he get, he get. He get. What happens? Whose fault is that if you walk into the road and you get hit by a cyclist? 
<laughs> Constable Woodcar was just left to go and uh, accident repair shops will be rubbing their hands. Yeah, they, they, there we are. There's always a winner in these things. Somebody always benefits. But I think it could be, um, I think it could be chaos. We're just, I mean, we're in this area, we're, we're fortunate in a way that there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of traffic. And again, he's going to go and measure the road now because I, I don't reckon it's very wide at all, that one. Um, technically, if he stands in the road now, the, the motorist, I think the motorist has to wait for him to walk out the way. So as you can see, we're taking shape. We're getting, we're getting those entwined hearts. We're dropping the levels. Um, yeah, and it's, it's trying to... It's preparing the love spoon for being sanded as much as we can. So what I'll also do, I'll also come around. I probably won't do that initially because I'd normally bevel the edges, but I haven't, act, it's all rough off the, um, off the bandsaw in fact. And so I'll, I'll leave it rough and then shape everything and then come back to, um, then come back to, 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 to sort of bevel the edges. It's that normal finish that we use where we bevel everything. And we've just caught a few places with the gouge. So we'll drop the levels down of those things. And again, what we've done in the one direction, we'll now do in the opposite direction. We also have to bevel a little bit around the heart, this, this little mini heart. Just like so. And these parts here, the bottom of the numbers and the full stops. We've got to carve them down into the wood as well. And again, we will shape around the outside of that part there. Now, one thing as well that I am going to have a little look at. Oh, he's heading back. 3.2 metres. 3.2 metres. Oh. 2.8. No, it's wider. It's is it? Yeah. So it's four. How many? Four. It's. Um... So it is wider than I, I, I thought, but. Yeah, it's 14. You see, uh, it's, it's debatable because it's, it's sort of edge to edge, about 14 feet. Right, which in metres, 14 uh, four feet? Point, just about 4 point, well, about 4.2 4 metres. 4.2 metres, right. Four point two meters, so, so, minus how wide is that car there? So that's a good 2 metres, isn't it? So that's, that's 2 metres. There'll be somebody in uh, some office. 1.8, right? So we've got 1.8. Oh, so you could technically, as, as if you technically, as if you thought, <laughs> if you really pushed them into the, the, the no, I mean, you're still not going to do it, are you? It's going to be that's going to be tight to try and go past a, a horse. Because, I mean, this road, you know, you, you get horse, you get the, 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 the horse riders, they use it a lot. Um, cyclists use it, pedestrians use it. It's a well-used road, and they've never had, there's never been any big problems, or was there? Uh, not really, no. No, it's all worked well. We even get the, the horse and cart going up and down at different times. And it seems to, it's always seemed to work quite well. I think the most relevant comment on it was Stevens, where he said it just needs a bit of common sense. Yeah. But unfortunately, today it seems that anybody in power and authority, they, they don't seem to understand there's a thing called common sense. Are we, we're in a different world here anyway, I mean, in fairness. I mean, like yeah, London we... London and places like that. Yeah, it's it's, yeah it is. Now. It is, yeah. Yeah, for ourselves, it's... We tend to be quite away from it all. And myself, I don't, I drive the boys down to school, which ironically, they're always on about the environment. And I always say that I would never do that if the local authority hadn't got rid of all the school buses, but they did. Um, 
And so you've got 50 cars driving down instead of picking up all the children on the school bus. But other than that, I, I don't really do a lot of driving. I drive more in Spain, actually, because we have to travel quite big distances when we go there. And I can't see them adopting these rules in Spain somehow. In Spain, the first thing they check on the car is the horn. <laughs> if you get if you stand in front of a car in Spain, that's the first thing they start beeping the horn at you. So you can see now those levels going back to the sanding part of it, we've dropped those levels right back below um, below where we're going to be resanding on the belt sander. So we've dropped that we right out of the way. Of, um items that we've made from that wood somewhere yeah we've uh, we've done well out of that piece of furniture and it has been really nice stuff to work in because it's one thing we we got quite a bit of local oak and that's fine for like our our internet spoons and more simple projects but for the bespoke spoons it is a little bit on the hard end of the spectrum so we do avoid using it a little bit. Right, so we're up to there. We're now, the main things we've got to do, we've got to shape around the outsides. We've got a little bit of detail to do, just a bit of separation on the, uh, the date, the full stops. And we're just gonna carve down, down on the bells. Yeah, and, um, I mean, we're, we're a couple of weeks now since we, we managed to, to get back in the end from Spain. And we're managing to get, uh, get through most of our bespoke list. So that's good. We're managing to get back on top of things. Because it was very fortunate that we would get asked to make all sorts of different things. But that list was starting to get quite, quite lengthy. And we... we try our best to keep it in check we don't like it if it gets too long our list of bespoke love spoons because it's quite time con consuming designing and hand carving them there's something that we don't always emphasize enough that designing that can really take a considerable amount of time because um sometimes we design something like for this one it for instance it was about the it was actually the third time that I drew it out before we got everything sorted and everything as as the customer wanted and that they were happy with it. And they even gave us a, a few images. They said, could you do this? There was one where the, the hedgehogs were sort of cuddling, having a cutch, as we say in Wales. But something like that, the problem with doing that is that you, whilst it, it, it would be possible, it would have been above the budget that they had because um, you, you have that sort of entwining together of the design and it just makes things a bit more complicated. Or possible, just not in this case within the budget that they were wanting for their love spoon. So you can see the bells, we shape them. You do that stop cut down into the wood which after we then go back over the surround and you just shape it as you go along. Shape it on the outside so we, um, afterwards we'll sand it so you get that rounded off finish. That's the way, the way we prefer to, uh, to shape and make the bells. And as a general rule, we usually prefer to get them at the top of the design, although in fairness, because we always think in terms of the bell tower, but it is a symbol that if we need to, sometimes, I don't know, if you've got something like birds or stars, if you feel they're more appropriate to be at the top, we can move them to the top. Oh, it's warning me that my battery is running low. Two seconds, bear with me. That's because I've forgotten. I prepared everything. Hopefully that won't affect any of the live stream. Um, hopefully that's all, you're all still with me and that's all okay. Yeah, um, 
what what happens is uh, I prepared everything and I leave it until the last minute to put the uh, the plug in so I'm not got it running on the battery until the last second and I've obviously forgotten to put the plug in right so we just shape the bell we've shaped on the outside we now shape it on the inside as well And this is where good good quality gouges this is we're working with a slightly larger gouge this is where in terms of speed because we got such a wide selection of gouges i could do this with the smaller gouge just take me a little bit longer so i use the bigger gouge to do the bulk of the shaping and then use this smaller gouge that's a little bit sharper at the moment just to continue shaping it but it just reduces some of the pushing with the uh, with the bigger gouge working first of all and thomas the woodcarver i think he's off there looking for our list now of all the different things that we've made with that wardrobe so that's a video that will be coming up on the channel Turn it round once more. And there's a few little little jobs to do. The first one is to just shape the clapper. So we carve one way, down like so. Apologies, I know my hands are carving, uh, are carving in front of the camera a little bit there. You'll be able to see it better now. So we carve back the other way. Yeah, the gist of that video will be showing how an initial investment of £65 in a piece of furniture, how we can very much turn that into um, quite a bit of... Uh, Do you ever that piece of paper? Quite a bit of return <coughs> for ourselves because... <coughs> Yes, it takes a bit of work to do it all, but it just shows how low then the costs are when it comes to the materials. And also, on top of it then, it, it was furniture nobody wanted. So this is a, quite a big mantra of our workshop, is highlighting how one man's rubbish is another man's treasure. And that's very much for ourselves at the forefront of what we do. You found it? No. Here we are. So again, we shaped that bit. I think this gouge as well. I think this one is due for a sharpen. Okay. That one there. That one there. I think it's just about due for a sharpen. Oh. One of my favourite gouges to work with. But it's just getting to that stage now. Just noticing a little silvery line as it's cutting. And also then it's... Um, it's not as sharp as we would like. How's the cold coming on? Thomas Woodcar has been struggling a bit with the cold. Is that um, what we want? Brandy, was it? Oh, just a little uh, something to. Uh, is it doing? Is it doing the? Throat? Is it doing the job? You were thinking about it. Any good remedies out there for common cold? <laughs> Here we are. Get him in the comments section. Yeah. We've he's been fully tested. He's been fully tested, so he's allowed. He's allowed in the. Uh, you're allowed. You're allowed out the house, and you. Although I don't know where the, what the rules are now. If you bring your own bottle, you can... Uh... So you see, what we're doing, uh, getting back to the spoon, you j we're just shaping, we we'll shape around the outside, so we'll bevel it. Again, thinking in that afterwards where you're, you're sanding it. 
drop those levels below where it'll be on the belt sander. We're very much towards the end of this project and we're getting towards the, um, where we'll be doing sort of uh, the, 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 set, the sanding and then the final shaping. Other things then we will do on the love spoon before shellacking it. We will, um, we will just take all the sharp edges off the back as well. So these are all little bits, just to refine what we do a little bit. Just improve the quality of the finish. So we shaped it the one way, we then shape round the other way. And it's always the same sort of things that we're working on where we do as much carving as we can in the one direction. We turn it round in the vise. Um, I like that one. Do you know, it's an interesting bit there. These two, very similar, but that one has got a bit more of a sweep on it. Mm. Although I do believe they are both a number... No, that's nah, that would explain it. No, they're both number three. They are both number threes, but I do find there's a subtle difference. Yeah. This one is a fraction straighter than the other one. So whether... Whether there is a difference, I don't, I don't know, but I, th I find it, if I want a straighter line, I use that one. So we're just shaping the top, that little button there that will be definitely used well. for, <coughs> yeah. Sounds good. Oh yeah. <coughs> that little button there where we'll shape that, That'll be used for, for hanging the spoon upon. So just cutting that down into the wood. Well, of course, it's. Uh, I was gonna. That's what I was gonna look up. Uh, short Tuesday and uh, see where see where we are on Valentine and that. Um, I just noticed that Stephen's saying you don't need a peloton. Do you know? There's a. That's that's one of the ones we find it. If, if we, uh, whenever I turn on YouTube, there seems to always be an advert for Peloton. That's the one that seems to come up all the time on my, uh, on my YouTube. If I go to watch a video, Peloton. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, a physical sort of process. I always remember years ago, I used to do, um, used to be involved in all sorts of different things with the training and stuff like that. And at different times, different friends of mine came and did some carving with us. And they found that, oh, I missed one of that. Uh, have another nibble with Thomas, and after that, you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, um, all of them, when they had a go, they found it quite strenuous in terms of their back, that sort of thing. Um, it's something that, you know, you just you just adjust to and get I, used I to. Was, I was sounding off last week about Valentine's Day, Dave. Welsh the Valentine's, Welsh, Welsh Valentine's, yeah. Well, it's obviously coming up now to what I call the proper Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, that's just two weeks away. Right. The, the 14th of February. Yeah. And um, another date... Uh, for love spoon makers to be looking towards is um, uh, well, Valentine's is the most important for us, really. Um, but which, which is only two weeks away. If we're being if we're being absolutely though honest with people, we've never done a huge amount around those dates, have we? No, it's only one hotel. That's, um, you know, if we're being absolutely truthful about it in more recent years with social media and the odd i'm trying to think wasn't there a ah that's right we were on cbs news one year um with the uh, cbs news sunday mornings and that was that was the day before valentine's day but other than that oh. we never done you know going back um going back the last the last 50 years, we would have to wait here. We're in a tourist area and we would be waiting until Easter. And that's really when our season would start. As you said, we do a little bit, you know, somebody would have a, a hotel would have an idea as a, as a little bit of a promotion for, you know, for meals, giving people um, 
Romantic. A romantic, yeah, a romantic meal and doing it as a bit of a package and they'd uh, they'd have love spoons from us for that sort of thing. No, no another point that's quite interesting this year, that Shrove Tuesday okay. falls on March the 1st. Shrove Tuesday, I always thought it was in February. It normally is, but Easter this year, you see. It's it, so late. It's, it's governed by... Um, the Passover. Easter, yeah. The, the, so the Jewish so festival late. of the Passover. The show Tuesday is the... I, I don't think in my lifetime I've ever known it beyond in March. No? I'm I, not I, sure. I anyway, can't. it is the 1st of March. And I, uh, we, what I'm getting at, we'll have two celebrations that day because it's the same day. Oh, and for our, our American counterparts, would they know what show Tuesday is? Because they don't know about it in Spain. Pancake day. We're giving it away, no? <laughs> oh no, I was telling them. Wasn't I supposed to tell them? Right. Oh, that was going to be the question. That was going to be a question for him. Oh, so I... yeah. Oh, sorry. I. Uh... Show Tuesday. How do you? What, what do they call pancakes in America? I wonder. I don't know. The French call them crepes. Yeah. Um, I think the Spanish call them crepes. Right. Because you can get savoury ones. You can have sweet ones and. I don't know. We'll have to. We'll, have, we'll see what comes. We'll see what comes in. You see if there's. Does uh, everybody celebrate? You know, show Tuesday. But the isn't there an American those? style pancake? I think so. Yeah. And the American style pancake. I think I've made them, and they're they're sort of um, they're thicker. They're thicker, more sponge-like pancakes. I made them with. I think it was self-raising flour. Very nice too. That sounds more like a pikelet. Oh what? A pikelet. A pikelet. Yeah. What's that then? Oh, I, I want to, I, we used to have pikelets. We used to, they were thicker than pancakes, but very similar. Right, and of course you get you get a Scotch pancake. Yeah. I mean we're coming up now March March the first. Yeah, that's Saint David's Day. Saint David's Day. That's so what, what we can have? We can have pancakes or Welsh cakes. Oh dear. We'll have me to make a Welsh. Dear. We'll have to make a Welsh pancake. That's that's going to be a dilemma. Oh look, somebody's spamming us. Vor me. Thank you for your spam, beeper something. That's spam, that is. That's, uh, we know, I notice we get more spam on the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, must be doing something there. Yeah. I was going to say, um, there we are. That, that was another British staple, wasn't it, with spam? <laughs> is it spam? Yeah, spam. Second World War, no? Spam? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Here we are. You don't see much of it in the shops now, but you no. you see plenty of it on on the computer. Right, so we got that shape in around there. What I will also do is I'll shape it around there, but it's so rough around the outside, I'm not going to bother with that until we've shaped it a bit more on the belt sander. The bells then, we're going to shape them around like this. Pancakes are made with self-raising flour here. And they are sponge. There you go. See, I, I made them once. They are really nice. Right. Yeah, they're very nice. So what the heck? What are we going to do? This is madness. St. David's Day and Pancake well, Day on the good. same day. It's good. We'll have Welsh cakes and pancakes. I've never we'll, heard the we'll night. We'll have a feast that day. We'll have to call it St. I don't say, what, what, what are we going to call that day? St. Pancakes Day. St. <laughs> <laughs> Pancakes Day. That's a funny one, isn't it? Yeah. I, 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 well, that is a that is a. I, I didn't realise. So we got a we got a clash. Yeah. I'm a, I'm amazed that the uh, I'm amazed that that this is this is this has gone unnoticed, isn't it? By what what are the what are they going to say up in the Welsh Assembly? Oh, I don't know. They they'll have to make a statement about that. Yeah. They'll have to come out from their bunker and their bar underneath the Senate and uh, tell us what they think about Shrove, Shrove David's Day. Oh, well, it's no problem because <coughs> <coughs> they'll be in leaks. Oh, that's the traditional one, isn't yeah. it? That's all he ate, wasn't it? He'd only eat, that was one of the only things he'd eat. St. David's. Yeah. Well, there's a story, I'm sure, where he, he, he ate a lot of leeks. Right. <laughs> More many kisses from him, would you? <laughs> but that's that's yeah. There's a. I thought that was part of the story. He was eating leeks, wasn't it? I think he was vegetarian. All oh, right. 
Oh, I may have made that bit up. Yeah, I think you have, this property here. My brother gets a case of it for Christmas every year. Yes. Picklet, Matt, um, used to come around in the 50s when I was a lad. That's the picklet. So what's the picklet, then? That's... Well, well I, I call them pikelet. Pikelet. Right, so you got... Uh, uh... Uh, it's the way I'm saying it. I got picklet from... Sorry, but it's pikelet, yeah. Yeah. That's the way I'm saying I'm saying it wrong. So do you remember the pike the pikelet man? Well, you we used to buy pikelets, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what what were were that they the same as to have pikelets? Right. Were they the same as? Sounds sounds similar. Were yeah, they, no, were they the same as a pancake or? No, they were thicker than a pancake. Are you sure they're not the American version of a pancake? <laughs> well, sounds like it, yeah. Right. Yeah. There we are. You learn something new every day. Uh, pikelets. Pikelets. I've never heard of them before. I'm looking round now. Here it is. This is my um, this is my sandpaper, and I, I found clean ugh, cleaning this. I think it was Stephen suggested it to me because they get really dirty. Use a bit of uh, white spirits on it. Old belt off the belt sander, and you can carry on using them. Because I was I was having a problem where it was getting my hands dirty, and then that would then get from my hands onto the wood. And it would descend from there. Sorry, sorry, my spell it. Ah, oh. no, I don't know whether it's it's just the way I read it. To be honest with you, I'm not sure. So I'm thinking now we we could we could try and um, we could try and think of something. Pancake and St David's Day together. It sounds like a mar marketing opportunity for somebody there, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. They'd have to come up with a St David's pancake. There was um, anyone looking at that one as well. I was looking on Aubrey, who often has joined us for the live streams. He's got, he had a Welsh recipe for he had a recipe, sorry, for Welsh cakes. Right. Yeah. I think it was a vegan recipe. I had a look on his YouTube channel at that one. Right. So we can see we're shaping that one. Round like so. What do you reckon? Are we going to put a coat of shellac on the? Okay, I get the shellac cleaner. We get a coat of shellac on this one. We're getting towards the end of the carving. Nice, nice little carving to do. We've tried to round those off a little bit more as Thomas the Woodcarver requested us to do. And uh, yeah, all in all, that's taking shape. It's taking shape quite nicely. Nice project. Always good to be asked to do something different. And um, we've got that sanding to be done on the belt sander. We've got a little bit of uh, hand sanding as well that we'll need doing. And what we do here, just to finish off, we will decorate. We'll decorate the uh, decorate the bells. Just like so. What's your shellac, Dave? I'm getting quite close to the camera there with my uh, gouge. Yeah. Thanks, dude. So we just do a little bit of decoration, just a bit of chip carving in and around the bells. And uh, yeah, coat of shellac, and that should be most of the work done on that particular love spoon. The way we are going, all going well, we uh, we might have caught up with most of our bespoke work by the end of next week. And if we do, then we'll be demonstrating some other stuff as well. For those of you as well, with the other uploads on the channel, Wednesday, we will have um, we will have an upload on, on something again. It will probably be um, is it we have got one coming up on some of the designing aspects, some of the things we sort of go through when we're working together to try and get a design sorted. That's one that's coming up fairly soon on the channel. All going well. There's another one we're, we're starting to look at. We've done quite a lot of filming in and around scroll saw blades. And with that, we're, we're giving a few thoughts, a few opinions, a few ideas and our own experiences on it. Um, 
yeah, any any input from yourselves is always appreciated, though, if because uh, we've all had different experiences and we all use different scroll saws. There we are. What do you reckon? Did you put a coat of shellac on there, dude? Yeah, go on. Yeah. I've done a brush there already. Right. So a bit of shellac with the brush. And I could do with really sanding off a little bit of paper there. Just get rid of these bits of paper. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get all of that off. But... You want to sand it on the machine? No, it'll be all right. We're only going to put it straight on the sander now. Here we are. So we've got the bells. I'm going to try and go around it as best I can. Got the bells like so. It's a lovely piece of oak in terms of the golden colour that you get on it. There's too much underbrush there. Too much shellac on there. A bit better. Yeah. Here we are. We've got a little bit of carving still left on the date. And that's the heart and the bells. And then the main... The main part of this design, our hedgehogs. Here we are, just like so. Two little hedgehogs together. So there we are. That's our little carving for the day. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Thank you as always for joining us. Uh, we'll be back all going well next week with another demonstration. Um, we see we may be towards the end of our list of bespoke spoons, so if we are, we'll be doing something different. If not, we'll be doing some carving on the spoons. Wednesday, we should have that upload, yeah, probably either around scroll saw blades or something to do with the designing of how we develop a design. Fridays, it'll be a little short, probably one of the, um, uh, again, little demonstration of the, the carving, so check that one out as well. Hope you all have a good week. Um, thank you, as we said, for again, for, for joining us. Any questions, any thoughts, get those into comments. And, uh, yeah, we hope to see you again soon. Good help. Thank you all. All the best.